Hey guys, Skylar here, and today we're going to talk about wallets. Where to store your coins, best wallets, what wallets are, the anonymity of wallets, all kinds of info on wallets. So before we get started, I would like to say that all of our proceeds going to this channel goes to charity, so any subscribe or like does go a long way, and I will be posting at least once a week, if not more, about all types of cryptocurrency news and updates, I'm talking about coins, reviews, uh, all sorts of cryptocurrency stuff, so uh, please like and subscribe, and uh, yeah, let's get into it, guys. Before we start talking about wallets, uh, for beginners, a good way to look at Bitcoin, uh, kind of a broken way, but to look at Bitcoin is, and wallets and how it all works is, th think about Bitcoin as the internet. You know, if, if, you know, Bitcoin is, you know, the internet is the Bitcoin currency. If you can't take that internet, essentially, and put it in your pocket, you can't take the internet, store it somewhere, put it on a hard drive, the internet's always going to be out there as long as people are... Um, you know, building servers and connecting more, and so essentially, a wallet. Um, what it is is, uh, you can look at a wallet as like an email address. So on your wallet, you're going to have a public key and a private key, and that's how you access your wallet. Now, you can look at that as a username and password. So, a cryptocurrency wallet. Um, you need to get a you need to have a public key to send transactions if you want somebody to donate you money you give them your public key um, and you can think of your private key as your password uh, you don't want to give your private key out to anyone because then they can access your Bitcoin or access your email you know you don't want that you want to give people your email address so they can send you currency so, I mean, it's kind of a broken way of looking at it, but um, but it works, I guess, um, you know. So, uh, you know, just like needing the internet to check your email, if you use Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrencies, you, you will need to have a wallet of some sort. <clears throat> now, there's different kinds of wallets out there, and there's a lot of uh, discussion over which wallet is the best. And, you know, the way I do things may not be the best for you, so under understand that. So th there's a few different ways of essentially storing your keys um, to your wallet. And uh, that is, you know, desktop. A lot of people use a desktop wallet. Essentially just storing everything on a program, on an uh, encrypted program somewhere on your computer. Um, another one is online. So a lot of people keep their information on cloud-based services and whatnot, um, which could be problematic if it gets hacked and whatnot. The other one is mobile. You keep a wallet on your cell phone on different types of programs and whatnot again could be pretty vulnerable though and then the two ways that are generally seen as the safest is a hardware wallet so a hardware wallet would 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 be something um, and I'm sure you've heard these companies Trezor and Ledger Nano so I originally got a Ledger Nano myself it's what I used for you know, year plus or so before I, I ended up uh, finding Trezor. And I really like Trezor um, when it comes to the hardware wallets for sure. And, and by the way, the hardware is nice, wallet is nice because you essentially you're keeping you're keeping on a fi you're keeping your keys on a physical device, and that physical device is encrypted, and and so far it hasn't been broken on on, on Trezor and um, Ledger Nano. That is, uh, and a lot of people um, end up using that way. Um, the safest way would be, I mean, I sorry, <laughs> the safest way I believe would be paper. So paper is nice because, you know, a hardware wallet, I mean, you, you can break it, you know, it can get water damaged. There's things that can happen to it that can't happen to a paper wallet. So paper wallet's nice because you're, just, you're, you're keeping your physical keys on a, on a physical piece of paper, and if you lose that piece of paper, then you lose everything, you can't get into your wallet. So that is a, a scary factor, but you know that that piece of paper is the only thing you need to keep safe, and you can visually see it every time. So a lot of people, you know, make, um, you know, take their keys and separate them and give them out to different family members or, you know, different P.O. boxes or different, you know, holes in backyards or, you know, whatever. 
What a lot what a lot of people actually end up doing is keeping all of their wallet keeping their wallet on exchanges. And that could be a huge problem because exchanges are hacked all the time. I, I swear like at least once a month there's a big there's millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions getting stolen from different exchanges. Um, a lot of people, you know, are like, well, Binance, Coinbase, they're crazy secure. Um, you know, Coinbase guarantees your money. Well, um, if you remember Mt. Gox, um, people didn't get back their money, did they? I think they're actually getting like $300, three, three or $400 per Bitcoin. Um, so they are getting their money back for when it got stolen years ago I believe is what's going on right now but um, and maybe I'm being it maybe I'm incorrect on that but at any rate you, you can't tr trust exchanges if something gets hacked and all of their money gets taken how can they pay you back you know um, the nice thing is if you keep it on a device um, or if you have the keys uh, you can um, you can pop your money into exchanges do a quick trade and pop it out uh, transaction fees if any, are going to be very, very, very minimal. Um, I'm talking pennies, um, you know, like compared to what your fees would be if you're transferring from different banks or transferring money from different countries or whatnot. So uh, I, I don't know the exact number now, but um, but Litecoin did like $99 million and it was like 11 cents or I don't know what it was. It was pennies though, um, is what they were charged for the transfer fee. So. Um, but, at, but at any rate, the actual transaction fees from go, coming in and out of um, exchanges are going to be very minimal. Uh, a lot of people talk about the anonymity of cryptocurrency wallets, and um, there are some coins like Monero uh, that are privacy coins that are that are real privacy coins, um, and you can you can keep your transactions secure in, in some manner. Um, Bitcoin, you know, you don't have to have a security number or anything to uh, get a Bitcoin wallet or a Bitcoin address so uh, however you can find out how money got put into that Bitcoin address who who got sent to they can find out spending habits they can correlate those spending habits with your real life spending habits you know um, there, there's ways of tracking people so yes your your physical name isn't attached to it but it's on it's on the blockchain ledger which everybody can see so um, you know there's your anonymity answer I guess <laughs> um, now uh, cryptocurrency wallets which which one is the best that's really hard to answer um, because there isn't one wallet that you can have every coin in uh, it's really annoying to have a million different um, passphrases and whatnot to write down to remember to log into certain you know certain coins and wallets and get certain yada yada yada. Uh, so it's nice to kind of have like one device that has everything on it. However, there's not anything out there that is one device that is secure that has everything on it. I'm sure there will be one day, but we're in very, we're very new in cryptocurrency still, and there's nothing like that currently. Now my favorite used to be the ledger nano it's my first one that i used and it is pretty easy to use it i like the look of it it looks just like a usb stick um you know it has multiple currencies on it not not a, not all but it has has quite, you know the, a few of the big ones um third party apps can run run from the device it has utf support um and it's it's not that expensive it's under 100 bucks i think it's you know around 70 bucks or something like that so anyway so I like um, ledger a lot however uh, my favorite hardware wallet my favorite wallet that I use currently is Trezor now if you go over to the Trezor website <clears throat> um, it's, it is a little bit expensive it's 150 euros and I'm, I'm not sure how much that is in the United States but it is more than a hundred it's, it's more than the, what the nano would be um, and by the way, um, I'm not talking about Trezor 1, I'm talking about Trezor Model T. Uh, you can get Trezor Model 1, but it is missing a lot of coins that um, Trezor Model T has. So if you go to their uh, coin page on Trezor, you can actually see um, all the coins that they support, and if they're going to support some soon, 
Uh, you see like Monero here and Lisk and Ripple isn't going to be supported on the Trezor 1 soon, but hopefully soon on the, on the Trezor Model T. Um, but if they don't, if they aren't supported, the nice thing is on the right, you have links here that you can check out and um, go to their homepage and uh, see what wallet they recommend. Now, if you're ever getting a wallet from the actual website, um, that's if you're ever confused and you don't know, you know, you don't have the money to buy a Trezor and you're not sure how to do, you know, certain wallets or whatever, you can just go to their homepage. Every coin's homepage has a way for you to get a wallet um, that they recommend. Um, and um, now, finding that web page, don't Google it. I, I would go to um, I would go to coinmarketcap.com, or um, this Trezor site is the two that you know that I can think off of, think of, of, of off the, think of off the top of my head that would be secure links. Phishing is a big problem um, these days, so you want to make sure that you're actually on the real website and you're not making a wallet that somebody is going to steal your money later. So there's links on the right here um, that show you everything. Um, that show you all the web pages you can go to to get the wallets, um, and you can also find the coin on Coin Market Cap and go to their website on there. Um, oh, let me actually show you this real quick. Uh, these are actual people had actual physical bitcoins, and they were keeping um, the keys inside the the physical bitcoins, and then they were sealing them, and that way you can actually physically have a bitcoin in your in your hand. It was kind of cool, but. Um, you know, it's more of a novelty thing um, than, than a security thing. But anyways, so when it comes down to it, uh, which wallet is the best? It, it all depends on the user. All you're doing is storing passwords, essentially. Username and passwords, and, um, and you can do that many different ways. I would not trust a third party. That's probably the least safest and effective way. Um, computer and mobile, if they're offline, that might be, you know, that might work. Um, the easiest is for sure paper. You just write it down and lock it away. Uh, safest would be probably hardware. Um, so, just depends on you, how you're using it, but all you're doing is storing passwords and usernames, essentially. So, it's up to you. So that's it you guys, I super appreciate you guys watching. Before you go, I would like to remind you guys that 100% of the profits made on this channel will go to charity, so any like or subscribe does go a very long way you guys. Uh, and I will be posting more and more content as we go on. I uh, super appreciate anyone who has subscribed already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.